My name's Gloria Hurtado, and I'm um, one of the assistant city managers. And um, we have a number of city staff here uh, tonight to help us with the process. You'll have a staff member at each of the tables. So uh, how about if I just get city staff to stand up so everyone can see who is here. And I know we have a number of people in the back. Thank you. So I'm just going to kick off the process. Um, we do have a video, an informational video for everyone to see, and then we'll get to the work on the tables. Um, Councilman Saldana is on his way, uh, but he asked us to go ahead and uh, get this process started. So what we're doing here tonight is um, getting input from, from you on our budget for the budget year that starts October 1st. So right now we're in what we call fiscal year 2014, and October 1st, it's a new budget year for the city. Uh, last week, our um, budget and finance departments gave the city council an overview of our five-year forecast, our five-year outlook for our budget. Um, it's projected that for this next year, we're going to have a financial challenge or a deficit. We're going to be short somewhere between 27 to $34 million. And that's if we just keep doing everything that we're doing today, we would have that deficit. And of course, we have to balance our budget, so that's part of this process. We cannot go into the red, so we have to balance it. Um, some of the major challenges for the city and contributing to this deficit is the cost of employee health care, and health care con costs continue to go up. Um, it's also very important for the city to maintain our AAA bond rating. We're the only major city in the country that has a AAA bond rating and from all three rating agencies, and what that means is it actually saves us money when we finance our bond projects. So it's very important to the city and to our general fund balance. We also um, have to maintain a strong uh, balance on our general fund. So all of these are some of the challenges that we face. The other is that we have a lot of unmet needs in the city. Um, that we, I'm sure we'll hear from you, but things like um, street maintenance, our parks and maintenance in our parks, code en uh, enforcement, our libraries, all of those are, we have some challenges in terms of unmet needs. The total city budget is about $2.3 billion, but what we're going to talk about here tonight is the general fund, and that is $988 million. So that's mainly our operations for the city. When we look, and that's represented here, and so when we look at that general fund budget of 988 million, the public safety, police, and fire make up about 67% of what the city spends out of its general fund. And then all of the other departments, which includes um, parks and rec, libraries, human services, um, all the departments listed here, planning, economic development, all of those departments are funded and all those services are funded out of the other third of the general fund budget. Um, over the past 15 years, the city's uh, total public safety cost, that 67% of the budget, has grown faster than the, city, uh, the city's revenues. So the money that we, come, that we get coming in is growing at a, fa a slower rate than our actual cost in the public safety area. Um, public safety is a priority city service. We certainly appreciate all uh, the dedication and service of our public uh, service employees, but the cost of providing health care benefits to police and fire employees has increased by 140% over the past 10 years and has continued to grow. Currently, the city is in collective bargaining with the police labor union, and one of the topics is employee health care. The city is proposing that health insurance, that, excuse me, that uniform employees pay health care premiums like the city civilian employees do. Uh, today, police and fire personnel do not pay for health care premiums. In order to deliver a balanced budget, as we are required to, we need to evaluate and prioritize the city's programs and services. So we're here today to ask you to help us with that prioritization. 
Um, this evening's agenda, of course, we're going to have a video. Then we will do table exercises, and we'll walk through that following the video. So I'm going to ask the staff to go ahead and run the video. The many services provided by the City of San Antonio are prioritized and funded through the adopted annual budget. This video will provide you with an overview of the many services provided by the city and explain how the city pays for these services. With an annual budget of $2.3 billion and 11,300 employees, the City of San Antonio strives to provide you with high quality services every day. So how does the city's budget work? The city's total budget is divided into separate funds, including the general fund, restricted funds, and the capital budget. The largest of these funds is the city's general fund, which receives funding from four major sources of revenue. Property taxes, sales taxes, CPS energy revenues, and other revenues. Property taxes represent the city's portion of the taxes you pay on your home and business. However, the city's portion of your total property tax bill is only about 25%. Sales taxes are collected on purchases made throughout the city and are dependent on the local economy. CPS Energy provides a portion of its gross profits to the city as a return on investment, and these revenues vary based on the South Texas weather. Finally, other revenues represent funding collected from user fees, licenses, and permits. Together, these revenues support the majority of city services. Two-thirds of the total general fund budget is allocated to the police and fire departments. With more than 4,000 uniform personnel, the police and fire departments enforce the law, protect San Antonio residents, their families, and their homes. The remaining one-third of the general fund resources support critical city services, such as streets, parks, libraries, code enforcement, health and human services, and animal care. The City of San Antonio is facing a financial challenge of 27 to 34 million dollars in fiscal year 2015 in the general fund. Expenditures in the general fund are growing at a faster pace than general fund revenues. The financial challenges that the city faces in 2015 include the increased cost of providing health care benefits to uniformed police and fire employees, maintaining a AAA bond rating, maintaining a balance between public safety and other services paid by the general fund, and the many needs across the city, including street maintenance, new sidewalks, library services, human services, and the maintenance of city facilities. In order to maintain a balanced budget in fiscal year 2015, as required by law, the city will have to prioritize services and redirect resources in the general fund. More than 66% of the general fund is allocated to the police and fire budgets. If the community desires to maintain or increase the funds allocated to police and fire, other city services such as streets, parks, libraries, animal care, code enforcement, and health and human services would have to be reduced. The city maintains more than 4,000 miles of streets, more than 400 miles of drainage infrastructure, and more than 1,300 traffic signals. The maintenance and preservation of the city's streets and sidewalks is the responsibility of the city's Transportation and Capital Improvements Department. Each day, city employees work to preserve and maintain streets across San Antonio by filling in potholes, as well as maintaining city drainage channels, adding bike lanes, and building new sidewalks. The Parks and Recreation Department maintains 244 parks, 14,816 acres of parkland, 145 miles of trails, 24 outdoor pools, and 29 community centers throughout the city. 
San Antonio's 26 libraries provide residents of all ages access to books, computers, and educational programs. Through the libraries, you can receive live homework assistance and download ebooks, audiobooks, music, and videos for free. The Animal Care Services Department is committed to improving outcomes for San Antonio's pet population through increased education, adoptions, and enforcement. For the current fiscal year, resources were added to increase spay-neuter surgeries, enhance licensing awareness, and reduce the number of loose and stray animals. As a result of these additional resources and many other efforts by the Animal Care Services Department, the city has been able to increase its live pet release rate from 30% in 2011 to 80% today. The city provides code enforcement officers who work throughout San Antonio to maintain the safety and integrity of our neighborhoods. These officers enforce the city's property maintenance code, address concerns caused by unoccupied and dilapidated structures, and help prevent and abate graffiti. Other important city services are funded by restricted funds that are not supported by property tax revenue. The rates and fees that support services paid by restricted funds cannot be used to pay for services in the general fund, such as police, fire, streets, or code enforcement. Services paid by restricted funds include garbage collection, review of new commercial and residential development permits, operations of the international airport, and the city's parking operations. Ensuring that the fiscal year 2015 budget is financially balanced and reflects the priorities of the community is a collaborative effort between residents, city leaders, and city staff. The city wants to know which services matter most to you. Let us know your priorities by attending one of five community budget input hearings scheduled from May 19th to May 22nd. You can also provide your input through the city's budget input box located inside libraries, senior centers, and online at www.sanantonio.gov slash budget. With your assistance, the City of San Antonio can continue to deliver high quality services to all residents in our great community. I don't know if the, oh, the mic is working. Um, good evening to all of you. I want to thank you all for sharing some time with us. How are you, Michael? Um, I see a lot of familiar faces. I see some new faces here. Uh, first off, I got to say about the video, I've never heard anybody more enthusiastically or positively, positively talk about a budget deficit than the voiceover on that video. Uh, we have a lot to get to talk about today, and the format that we worked with in the past was that we'd, it's, it's sometimes more productive to have some uh, small engaged conversations and then draw out from there what priorities are. And I know that we have a lot of groups here who have uh, certain uh, priorities that they, have, they feel are in, in their interest or in their minds, uh, some of the top. The best thing is that those get distilled and communicated out to us here. There's no point in me standing up here and talking as much as you know, the point of today's meeting is that we hear as much as we can from you all. Uh, so I just wanted to come and make sure that you all know that we're, we're here, we're interested. I, we'll be sitting at one of the tables. We get to do this uh, round every single year. So um, look forward to it. And again, I thank you guys for, uh, for being here with us today in our district. So for those of you who are in District 4 residents, I hope you'll welcome those from outside the district to our beautiful Southwest side. So let me pass it back to Gloria, who's going to uh, introduce herself. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to introduce myself. My name is Ray Saldana. I'm on the city council. I have been since 2011. I grew up about five minutes away from here. Um, I'm about 5'7", 175. So there's my introduction. Thank you. Thank you, councilman. Okay, so time to do the work. 
Um, this is going to be a three-step process, and as I said, we do have a city staffer who's here to be a facilitator, note taker, helper at each table. So the first thing we want you to do is identify five program areas or services that you would consider either reducing or eliminating from the city's budget. And the second is tell us if you are willing to increase revenues or fees, things like property taxes or park fees that could be used to support um, the services that you do want. And then the third thing we want you to do is give us three um, service priority areas. So three things that you want to keep or increase or add to the city budget. So one is five areas to decrease. Second is where the revenues might come from. And then the third is what would be your highest priorities to add or include in the city budget. And we're going to spend about 30 minutes um, on this exercise. Then we'll have each table report out. And I will tell you that we do collect all of this information at each of the budget hearings, and it is used um, by the city manager as she develops her draft budget, which will go to city council on August 7th. So I will leave you alone for 30, 30 minutes, and we'll have staff walking around in case there's any questions or issues. Yes, sir. Um, yes, ma'am. My name is Eugenio Rodriguez. I live near the St. Mary's uh, University area, and I noticed that most of the meetings are held way the heck out of the center of the city. Uh, I live in an older neighborhood. Fire and police are very important to us because there are older homes. Mm -hmm. You need immediate response. And I'm not just talking. Mm -hmm. I was a former firefighter, and I, have, I retired with disability. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not too familiar with uh, intricacies. Uh, you said your thing kept calling fire and police. My concern is that just by being here, are we lobbying already for the city to be in favor of reducing police and fire services or uh, getting involved with that? When in fact, I think it's, I really don't know much about collective bargaining. So on your, but, on the third but step? But by being here, is that gonna come out? So many people came here and they all heard, I mean, I heard fire and police like 10 times or uh, several times, not 10 times, that's exaggerated. But it seems like, are it's we gonna be lobbyists for budget. that? So and it's, you have an opportunity, excuse me, I'm sorry. You have an opportunity to add, uh, so if you want to see increases to police and fire, then you have that opportunity to add it. Maggie, nice to meet you, I'm Ray Saldana, with the San Antonio City Council, I represent District 4. Julia, nice to meet you. Do you think you can tell me a little bit about what's going on? Sure, sure. So this is a budget hearing, um, and we have, every year we go through a budgeting process in which uh, about September we vote on the finalized budget for all the numbers. It's about $2.3 billion, but uh, we'd like to hear from residents um, as to what they want to see more of, what they want to see less of, a lot of opinions, a lot of passions about certain things, but um, it's important for us to hear from our community. So uh, today what we're seeing is a budget meeting that's happening here on the south of San Antonio, but they're also happening in every corner of the city. South, east, west, north, and center. This is your first time doing it? Uh, this is my third time, actually. I've been on the council for three years, and so, uh, I've been in 12, 13, and 14. Um, it's, it's always a different type of process. Sometimes we have folks come up and speak in front of the entire crowd, and today we're doing a, a different type of process in which we get in smaller groups, prioritize your top five uh, most wanted, and the top five things you could perhaps do without if you have a question. Okay, we've got about 30 minutes, so what happens after you get all the information? So after we take all the information, what happens is we move in, we move, we collect that, uh, uh, that those data points of what you want more of, what you want to see less of, things like parks or parks investments, streets and drainage, police and fire. Uh, that goes into a value that gets shared with the entire city council because we meet all together at a, as a collective group and those points of, of data as to what we want to see more of the less of guide our conversation before we go into the vote. And if people weren't really interested in this today, what would they do to get their information? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a process that goes on, it could go on 365 days out of the year. I mean, this is just the budgeting process and we coordinate community conversations in people's neighborhoods. Um, but you can always come to our offices, you can do it online, you can come into any of our public libraries and we have comments about comment boxes about our budget. So um, it, it, it's happening all the time and we're always open for input and suggestions.
Okay. Dale, is your table ready? So we did the uh, balancer, budget balancer sheet um, on service areas where we wanted to meet the gap of 27 million. So we got to 26 million uh, by reducing planning department, economic development, center city development, downtown operations, uh, it's for uniform benefits to uniform benefits and the city manager's office. Um, the reason all of these planning, economic, center city are because uh, many of those use the restricted funds, but we believe they take from the general fund. So they don't put anything in the general fund, but they use, but, but, because all their funds are in restricted, but yet they use, they eat up the general fund. Well, that was kind of where we had discussion in our table. Your table might have a different discussion. <laughs> um, and we weren't, we weren't 100% on anything. We, were, we just put up whatever we, we talked about. And the property tax, there was a one cent, one percent increase. One percent increase? One cent, one penny, one cent. It was one cent. One, no, it was one cent. Okay. It was one cent that would come up to eight million, but then also focusing on business, which was uh, commercial properties, to also increase there. That's it. Great. Thank you. Okay, we're going to have this table up front. Edward's table. Disqualified thing. So, yeah, let's see here. Okay, some of the things we were looking at making cuts. Uh, first of all, was that there's, you know, if you're not aware, there's a $80 million uh, reserve fund or rainy day fund, whichever you want to call it. We're not looking at reducing that, but just reducing the $10 million that's been uh, allocated to go for towards that. Uh, this next budget cycle, which could be used for obviously a lot of other services. Uh, some of the revenue increases, we had a little bit different number, but we still believed on the one cent too, uh, on our individual property taxes, because uh, a lot of us who were still in the workforce, we felt we could absorb that. A lot of you 65 and older, it wouldn't affect, and took that into consideration, but uh, they had eight million, I heard it was seven million, either way, one million, one other way, or or not, but a lot of us, it was 100%, we were willing to do that and it put a little skin into the game. Also, holding these businesses uh, accountable to, to start paying uh, their fair share. Uh, there's certain businesses out there affiliated with the city that own a substantial amount of property that are paying zero property taxes, and I don't think that's correct. Just to look at the library, the consideration, we don't know what the dollar amount would be, but looking at the possibility of a small fee structure and maybe looking at the utilization of the libraries to see where they're maybe not used so much uh, in one area of town, but then maybe they're utilized a lot more. You know, like I said, that's going to take some work uh, to look at that, maybe do that a little bit more efficient, but at the same time, there might be some reductions or increases we could do. Parks fees, we just put it out there. We agreed at it with the whole table. We don't know what those are exactly, but it was just some ideas. Uh, and what we had talked about also of what not want to touch, uh, the table was 100% consensus with uh, police and fire, keeping it status quo. Uh, some of the areas that we would like to see some increases, we don't know what the dollar amount for sure would be. We'd like to see an increase in animal care and also human services. That finishes our report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is table for this table four? Are you ready? Hello, my name is Eugenio Rodriguez, and I would like to congratulate the gentleman next to me that he survived our table. <laughs> Poor man, he needs a raise. He should be up there somewhere. Uh, one of the things that came up was animal care, streets, human services. Um, excuse me? Priorities. Oh, at priorities. Um, how much, we don't know. 
because we don't really don't have uh, a clear picture of what's really going on. We don't know what the assets are, the liabilities of each category. So it'd be nice to know, to at least have a better picture of what each category really costs. So we're just throwing out numbers in the air. But anyhow, okay, so these are supposed to be the top ones. There was not much consensus on this one. So therefore, Your Honor, we have a hung jury. No, let's see. <laughs> The alignment, um, there was, it was chaos, no consensus, because like I said, we don't, we really don't, we're just throwing numbers out there in general. And this is a budget, a city budget, a serious thing that can affect a lot of people. So we're very concerned about saying, oh, we want this or we want that. Okay. The property tax thing, the first thing that popped up is uh, people on fixed incomes. How will they work with it? One thing that's not here is, which we should have is a San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. Anytime there's an abatement, why not ask them when they ask an abatement that those that are already in the chamber give up some of their abatement to bring in new businesses that they want to attract. But that's a different story. That's my opinion, not the tables. So that's what came up, uh, less than a cent. What was it, miss? The lady told me how much it was. Less than a cent, right? Uh, a penny is about 13 Yeah, so that's four, what? Four million. Yeah, a penny, less than a penny uh, for taxes. Uh, the, some of the services that are mentioned, people aren't even familiar with in, the, in our table because this is a different side of town. So there's a disparity of information uh, regarding different, if you go to certain places, you'll see certain needs. And if you go to another section, you'll see other needs. So we're a big city. We all have different neighborhoods. We all have different needs. So it's quite a task to bring all of them together to a consensus. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, table five, Chief. Thank you. Yeah, let's just do it right, let's do it right about. Uh, right about here. Hi, we're from table five. And um, if we'll switch positions here, there you go. The sun's in the way. <laughs> On the areas of um, cutting back, we would like to see the city manager's office, office in, to include the city manager, her salary reduced by 200 million and eliminate her bonuses. I'm sorry, uh, 200,000. And that includes her staff as well, which includes the city attorney. And we also, on the delegate agencies, Haven for Hope, we'd like to see their budget cut in half so that they can become self-reliant, just like we do. We tighten up our belt and we move on. Police. What we, what we discussed is uh, we'd like to have them review their salaries and benefits. By no means did anybody overrun the other and say we have to cut their, their, uh, their benefit package. I don't think anybody here is brave enough to go put on a gun or run into a burning building or having to bring somebody else back to life with EMS. So I think by reviewing their salaries and benefits and their procedures on what they do, like Maybe sometimes they leave their car on when it shouldn't be on. The gas consumption of those vehicles, if we were to uh, include some kind of program to uh, eliminate some of that waste, we would be saving some money. And we wouldn't have to cut their benefits or even consider cutting their benefits at all. And that could be part of that included aligning them more with the educational services or even the state services. It's about aligning their benefits and their salaries more to what, ta what, the, what the state employees and the teachers would pretty, pretty much get. In other words, they'd have to pay their share on their stuff too. Everybody else does. Sorry. But that's just a review, review uh, process. Also, animal care services. We'd like to see them reduce their budget, their entire budget, which is 11 uh, million. We'd like to receive, see it reduced by 3 million. Everybody else is taking a cut. So let's make them take a cut as well. And I mean, they're doing a good job. 
but not good enough. And so let's talk about the Center for City Development. We talk about the hemisphere. We talk about those one-time projects. We want to be able to, see, able to cut that by 0.6 million. And I think that would be a comfortable uh, amount. On the revenue type, we'd like to see um, the EMS transport fees increase by 33%. That's feasible. Now, commercial property, the, the tax on the commercial property, we want to see an increase of 25%. No increase in the uh, residential uh, property, property tax. We can't afford it. And we also want to increase the entertainment tax. Let the visitors who come here pay their way and to help us out, as we do when we go to theirs. Thank you. Thank you. OK. I think we have one last table back here. I don't know what the table number is. Okay, we kind of, um, we had a lot of really good discussion at our table, a lot of passionate people and we kind of skipped to step two through our discussion. This is just kind of what it led to, so sorry. Um, but in our discussion, we talked about things that we felt would be either okay or comfortable. We didn't come to a consensus, but this was as close as possible. So um, areas that we could reduce would be after school programs, human services, delegate agencies, historic preservation, center city development, and planning development. And there was a little bit of discussion about the amounts. Um, that's kind of the part that was hard to come to a consensus. But we did reach a balance of taking out 27 million. When we went to the site that we thought deserved to have an increase in money, we talked about what were things that were important to the city. So of course, police and fire, that was important. We did want to see an increase of 10 million for them. Library services, a lot of the things that the library provides for us um, help not only school districts, but citizens who don't have the type of opportunities and the things that others have. So a two million increase. Animal care, especially with education, of spaying and neutering, that is something that needs to be looked at, so we allocated five million. Code enforcement, um, a million, and then streets, five million. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, I think that's all of our tables. Um, now, the, what will happen, all this information will be collected from the five budget hearings. Um, council will have a um, all-day budget strategic planning session next week and then the draft budget will be presented on August 5th and then there will be five more budget hearings so that um, you will have an opportunity to comment on what the draft budget is and then it's scheduled for City Council to adopt on September 11th. So we want to thank you for taking time tonight and coming out and uh, please have a safe trip home. Thanks.